last videos we have seen uh, what types of uh, different OPCs are formed and manufactured and also we have seen how actually OPC is formed there we have seen that uh, there are some raw materials which are classified in two groups one is argillaceous and another is calcareous so these two types of material are proportion and then they are fusion in almost 1400 to 1500 degrees celsius and a clinker is formed then this clinker are pulverized or smashed to form fine particle cement okay now in this video we will see what are the actual composition of ordinary portland cement and also we will see in what are the actual composition of the clinker or the cement actually okay first we will see what are the composition of the raw material so the first and foremost raw material is your calcareous material or the lime which is uh, the source of calcium oxide and i think uh, this is the one of the most important component in cement in cement we want first thing is strength that cement will be able to give us certain strength after binding the sand and stones stone guards okay so after uh, binding the sand and stone grates it will be able to give a certain strength so it is very important that a cement has proper strength component so here lime act as that component lime is the main source of strength but lime cannot alone provide the strength i repeat lime cannot alone provide the strength to provide the strength lime has to be combined with some others component what are they they are silica or silicon dioxide alumina or aluminium oxide and your ferric oxide okay these three are actually act as a single component and i think they are they should be termed as setting regulator what is setting when you add water to a powdered cement okay suddenly it will become a paste but it will not remain as a paste forever okay it will be hardened or it will be set so setting is the process of hardening okay now why i'm saying these three component are setting regulator because the ratio of silicon dioxide and alumina plus ferric oxide control this setting characteristic this ratio determines how quickly the cement will be set or how slowly the cement will set okay so this were the chemical composition of raw material okay this is the raw material when the clinker has not formed just before the clinker formation that means when you are proportioning the raw material these are the component actually this does not remain same throughout the process after the clinkering process this component totally vanishes and new component form which actually actually support or give the characteristic to a cement will then later we will discuss about that component so now what will happen if we increase the lime decrease the silica or increase the ferric oxide or decrease the ferric oxide so first uh, let's have a tour about the basic component and their role in the formation of cement so lime is the strength regulator so you can ask me that we want more strength so increase the lime content and decrease the silica suppose overall weight is raw material uh, weight of raw material is 100 kg and now you want uh, 90 kg lime and only 10 kg silica but that actually doesn't work really because i have said that lime cannot provide strength alone it has to be combined with some element or component so if you increase the lime content and decrease the silica what will happen there will some lime remain alone which cannot be combined with any other one so this will remain free free in the cement and it is not at all good for cement because 
when there is free lime and you add water from calcium oxide to calcium hydroxide will form and this will increase the volume and obviously an expansive spacer will act within the concrete and concrete will crack so there should be some uh, balanced proportion of lime as well as of silica okay so what is the role of silica alumina and ferric oxide i have said that they control the setting time how if you increase the silica more so laser will be heat of hydration later i will discuss about heat of hydration why if silica is more or uh, it is lesser okay so just for now you should understand that if heat of hydration is less it is good for concrete why we will discuss later okay if heat of hydration is less then it is good for concrete obviously it is desirable i'm just giving a briefing about this heat of hydration heat of hydration means you add water in the cement and some reaction will occur and all these reactions are exogenic that's why heats are released and if heats are released it will remain within the cement paste suppose the paste is formed and at the outer face of the paste the heat uh, is has gone away and it has been cooled down but the within the paste within the paste means in the interior of the paste the remain heat remains so what happen from outer to the inner surface there is a thermal gradient and due to this thermal gradient and strain uh, and thermal stress is generated and due to this thermal stress and strain is generated this strain are tensile in nature and cement is very weak in tension that's why crack is occurred so there is a long story and detailed story about it <coughs> just for now understand that less heat is always desirable within the cement so if si2 is more or silica is more less heat so it is desirable also if silica is more the concrete become very very resistant against your uh, sulfide attack or chemical attack in coastal area this is very good so obviously your tendency will be let's increase the silicon dioxide or silica component because it is good okay and now what you do they are fixed sio2 alumina and ferric oxide they are fixed so if you increase this silica you have to reduce this now the actually story comes what happens the role of ferric oxide in formation of cement is very crucial i have said you form the clean car at the clean at 1400 to 1500 degree centigrade that is because of this component if there is no ferric oxide this temperature requirement would be more maybe some 1900 to 2000 degree centigrade level or some more or less okay but it will not happen in that less temperature means at 1500 degree standard temperature that's why we say that a ferric oxide act as a flux what is flux flux is a component in a fusion process when you are uh, mixing some raw material and then you are heated them up for forming some another type of material this process is known as fusion process and this fusion occur at certain temperature now for different material this fusion temperature is different obviously for fusing the iron is would be more compared to your clay so in case in our case this is clay and your limestone so if you don't add ferric oxide this temperature would go very off so it act as a flux now we have increase the silicon dioxide for gaining this advantage means less heat of hydroxide hydration and more resistance against sulfide attack okay so what will happen your fusion will be difficult not only that your clinker will not be formed properly so the basic purpose is not served so there is no value of increasing this silica 
tremendously at the cost of ferric oxide okay so there should be a proper balanced amount or proportion of both lime silica ferric oxide everything so what should be the proportion to form a actually OP, better type of OBC okay so lime normally remain within the range of 60 percent and this is control the strength as you can see if lime is more what will happen it cannot combine there is no certain material with which it can combine and this free lime actually make the cement unsound unsound okay if there is free lime this make the cement unsound unsound means when the time passes away you add water and this free lime hydrate means from calcium oxide calcium hydroxide is formed and the cement or concrete try to expand obviously when the concrete try to expand it will crack that's why if there is free lime or more lime okay it will make the cement unsound okay that's why here it has been written control strength and soundness next one is silicon dioxide or silica i have already explained its for role it actually if it is more there is less heat of hydration more resistance against sulfate or chemical adder but if it is too much at the cost of ferric oxide i have said that the fusion will be difficult okay and there is another function of ferric oxide actually it provides some sort of color provides some sort of color in the cement so these are the component of raw material now mixing all this raw material you have formed the clinker and you then you have pulverized the clinker to form the actual cement powder now we will see what are that actual component which provide us the strength and durability or setting property properties which we want from a opc or ordinary portland cement okay let's see so normally what happens all those raw materials which we have discussed already that means lime silica alumina ferric oxide if you mix them and uh, if you add water you will not get any cement that means that uh, raw materials will not set or become hardened okay so that's why oxide don't have setting or hardening property in presence of water what happens after clinker has been pulverized these properties come that means when you have formed the powdered cement from clinker or that boulder type of material after fusion process and you add some water these properties come now who give this property to those oxide obviously these are gifted by the fusion or burning process so naturally this fusion and burning totally change those oxide and form some new material and these new materials were first identified mr bog and that's why these materials are called bog's compound these bog's compounds are later named by la chatelier and torenbaum by some different different name okay now we will discuss what are the box compound and what are the name given by the by mr la chatelier and torenbaum okay what are box compound box noticed that after formation of clinker this all oxides totally transformed in a different type of material which have <coughs> cementing property that means after addition of water they shed and become hardened okay so he observed and identified four types of this compound first one is tricalcium silicate second was dicalcium silicate third one tricalcium aluminate okay these are mainly associate with our discussion these are mainly three component which contribute to the strength of cement which plays a vital role for setting the cement and there is last one 
tetra aluminofluoride this element also found but it is not that much important in setting or your strength giving property okay so what is tricalcium silicate it doesn't have any specific actually formula simply the lime and silica these are the oxide we have mixed before clean cutting process okay lime and silica are assumed combined together through a chain and there is three calcium component and one silica component okay that's why it is known as tricalcium silicate and this has the cementing property not alone neither lime has cementing property neither silica has cementing property cementing property means to be shed and become hardened after addition of water but if they combined like this that means if you add three lime and one silica and then you make them a single compound by some chemical reaction or so, something like that then it has cementing property and it is known as halite its symbol is tricalcium that means actually three should be in your uh, your suffix okay so c3s tricalcium silicate three calcium oxide and one silicate similarly dicalcium silicate here the same thing happens but instead of three calcium oxide component it has only two and it is known as belite its symbol is c2s okay similarly tricalcium aluminate you can read it about and its name it cellite and last one is your phyllite okay next we will see what are the actual functions of all these box compound what are the actually role they play within the cement that is our major